who do not know, Angela says she likes my top. Thank you, Angela, it's from Aritzia, it's really old. Um, and so that's what we're gonna go in today. So if you wanna stay ignorant about the power of your mind, if you wanna stay ignorant about being in control of your emotions, I invite you to click off. But if you wanna understand more about your mind, what you can do to um, shift how you feel, become more empowered, become more successful, and then also share that with your clients, then this is the perfect place for you. So to start off, I wanna know who I'm hanging out with, I wanna know who I'm talking to. So if you're a coach, a practitioner, a healer, anything like that, um, let me know in the comments because it allows me to cater the live stream specifically for you. Okay, and just so you know to whoever participates the most this week, you are going to get uh, chosen by me for a prize valued at $100. So it's going to be a mug, a really pretty crystal and a book. A book recommendation from me so here we go so today we're gonna to be talking all about NLP neuro linguistic programming and so we're talking about techniques that can help you create major shifts in seconds for your clients let me just mute Facebook um, learn how the world's top mindset coaches and light workers use NLP to help their clients ditch addictions get rid of self-sabotage all their limitations through creating massive shifts in the way that your mind stores information I can see you guys coming on your aspiring coaches your life and business success coaches, your mindset coaches. Sharice is here. She's a self-love coach. Um, Tammy's learning about this for herself, not for clients. That's awesome. I love learning about this stuff and using these tools on myself too. So I'm really happy that you're here. Okay. So first things first, if you know anyone in your life who uh, you think could benefit from this, I would totally appreciate if you would just hit the share button so we can get this information in front of more people. And um, okay, so on day one, I talked about how we are all programmed, right? Hopefully you're with me from day one, you know what I'm talking about when I say we we're all programmed. So we like our bodies are kind of like robots that react to whatever our mind feeds in. And ages zero to seven from our childhood are when we get programmed. And so think about the things that kind of you brought into your life from ages zero to seven it could be your parents arguing or fighting over money right it is definitely for me um, Disney movies right Disney movies programmed us especially as women that we need to be like a fair little fairy princess type thing and we need to wait for a man a prince to come into our life and that's the only way that we can live happily ever after and that creates a deep psychological like issue within us that makes us feel like like prioritize certain things over other things right there's programming from our school so for example when you were growing up you might have did a really beautiful art project that you loved but then when you took it to school to get graded on it your teacher was like mm, no that's that's just a, a C it's not good enough right and so that's programming you to think that you need to rely on other people's opinions other people's opinions are more important than your own opinions right and so that's what we want to ditch that's what we want to get rid of um, and that's what NLP neuro linguistic programming can help us with so I have a lot of notes so if it looks like I'm reading it's because I am usually I can go on live streams and I can just riff but I wanted to give you guys uh, some of the best information possible all right um, great. Okay, cool. So the definition of NLP. So NLP, the N st stands for neuro. So neuro is our nervous system, our mind, what we use to experience the world through our senses, seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, tasting, energetically experiencing all those fun things. Uh, neuro and then linguistic. So linguistic is the language that our mind uses, right? And how we experience the world. So we experience the world through pictures. We experience the world through sounds. We experience it through feelings, through smells, through tastes, and through our internal dialogue, right? The stuff that we're saying to ourselves. We could be in a completely normal situation, but we could be having negative self-talk, right? And so um, our internal, internal dialogue, even though it's happening on the inside, is still shifting how we experience the world. My Facebook keeps freezing. Let's see what's happening here. Sorry guys, I don't want my Facebook to be freezing, but it just is. All right, why is that happening? All right, cool. So. Sorry about that, everything keeps freezing. All right, so neuro linguistic and then programming. So we can use programming to essentially shift our attitude, how we feel about certain things, how we react to certain things so we can react better, all right? So 
uh, what I want to talk to you about first is when you're starting off your coaching clients with your uh, coaching sessions with your clients, or even if you're not a coach and you're just you know meeting someone new, um, we talked about creating connection and building rapport. Um, and let me know, guys, on Facebook if it keeps freezing. Let me know if it is freezing or if it's not freezing, because on my computer it looks like it's freezing, but maybe it's totally fine for everyone else. Okay. So we talked yesterday about how we can build connection and rapport through energetics, through um, matching and mirroring how people are talking and how they're saying things and their tone of voice. And one part that I didn't talk about yesterday for building connection and rapport and really reading our clients or reading the people in our life is using eye patterns, okay? So this is something that um, is one of those things that we don't know that we don't know until we learn it in NLP, right? And so a really cool thing is that when we, like how we communicate with the world and how we, um, kind of pick up what we've learned in our in our brain and we process our memories, we process our thoughts, we process how we're gonna say say things, our eyes actually will look into different areas of our minds to understand and, and to communicate in a better way. And so if you're working with a client, what you can do is you can actually pick up on their eye patterns and see which direction they're looking in and that's gonna help you understand um, how they're processing certain things. So if people are looking up to the right, that means they're recalling information visually. So if people are looking up to the right, they can visually see what they're recalling, what their memory is, and that's how they're communicating it. Now the cool thing is if they're looking up to the left, and this is different for everyone, for some people it's the right, for some people it's the left, but um, usually if they're looking up to the left, they're actually constructing it. So that's a side of our, of our mind where we visually construct things. So they're looking up and they're creating a picture. So if someone keeps looking up in this direction, they might actually be lying to you, right? And so that's a good thing to sort of pick up on which directions people are looking and see where they're looking when they're talking to you because that's when they're either remembering information or they are creating information. Now, if they're looking to the sides, that's the that's auditory. So if they're looking to the side, um, on this side, they're remembering something they heard. Remember, maybe they're remembering a sound, they're remembering something that someone told them, um, something like that. They're remembering something that they heard. And if they're looking to this side, they're making something up. They're saying like, oh yeah, so-and-so told me this, or yeah, I heard the song and, and it sounds like this, even though they never had. They're making it up because they're looking at their auditory uh, constructed side. And then when someone's looking towards the bottom on the same side, that's, <coughs> sorry, that's kinesthetic. They're feeling something. So I'm probably looking down there a lot because I'm definitely a kinesthetic person. And if someone's looking down to this side, they're having a lot of self-talk. Now, why is it important to know this? Because if you're a coach and you're working with your clients, you can know when they're communicating with you, are they seeing something? Are they are they recalling a situation and they see it vividly in their minds? Are they making up that they saw something that they didn't really, maybe because they're trying to hide something? Or are they feeling it? Was it a situation or an emotion that they feel so strongly that they don't even need to look up, they just feel it? Or are they having a lot of self-talk? Maybe they're, they're trying to work through something, trying to communicate something with you, but they're in this area where they're having a lot of self-talk. And I know I'm going through this really fast. I have so much information that I wanna share with you that it's you know a lot to go through on a live stream, but I think it's good for you guys to have a knowledge of kind of knowing what you don't know so you have more tools to help you experience the world and more tools to help you help your clients, or at least get a general understanding and then you can look into taking more NLP courses or NLP certifications, okay? And so the reason why it's really important to know that is because that's gonna help you communicate with your clients on a deeper level. And so for example, and um, Mademoiselle, El Maggi is asking a question. So she said, so if I got this right, looking to the right is lying, looking to the left is recalling. So a lot of the time it is, but I'm gonna show you how to um, kind of uh, calibrate that for uh, for each individual client because it's gonna be different for different people, okay? And it's, it's not always, it's just a mostly rule of thumb, okay? Sometimes people are reversed. But I'm gonna get into that in one second. So for example, if somebody is talking to you but they keep looking down at one specific um, area, like they're looking down at their self-talk, 
and they're taking a while to communicate, you know that they're having a lot of internal dialogue. Maybe they're thinking like, oh, is it safe for me to say this? Should I say this? Da, 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 da. They're having a lot of self-talk. I know for me, that used to be a huge thing. Before I would say anything out loud, I was overthinking everything in my head before I was communicating. And that was creating this barrier in between me and the world, which now you see I've completely gotten rid of because I just sit here and talk without even, without even a split second going in between. So these are a great way to read your clients so that you can help them in a deeper level because you understand how they're pulling information and how they're communicating with you. So now um, I can't get into all of the questions, but uh, Mademoiselle Lamaggi asked an amazing question. So she said, if I got this right, and this is on Instagram, by the way, if I got this right, looking to the right is lying and looking to the left is recalling. So that's not always. So what we want to do is we want to kind of calibrate the client. So we figure out where they're pulling information from. So a great way to do this is before you start to read them, you would ask them something like, can you think back to the color of the wall um, in your bedroom when you were 10 years old? right? And then look at where they look. So if they're looking up here, they're recalling because they're thinking of something true, right? And then you could ask them a question like, can you imagine if your car was bright orange, as long as their car isn't bright orange, obviously. And so if they're imagining something, then they might be looking up here because they're making it up. And so you can ask them a series of questions like that having to do with their visuals, having to do with uh, how they hear, so auditory, have, having to do with how they feel, and having to do with self-talk. And then you can really calibrate for your specific client to understand where they're recalling information that's going to help you communicate with them on a deeper level. And so I like to work with my clients for at least three months because that allows me to get to know them on a deeper level, get to understand how they communicate, their physiology, all of those sorts of things so that I can help them overcome things a lot faster. Okay, so a great thing to do is just calibrate and um, ask those questions and then you'll know where they're pulling um, from information. Sharice is saying she does that all the time. Cool guys, so if you are loving this, leave me some hearts, let me know. If this is cool information, you've never heard it before, let me know. And oh yeah, I also wanted to ask you, who did the homework from last night? Leave me a comment if you did the homework from day two or the homework from day one. I really wanna hear if you guys are doing the homework and what kind of results you are getting from um, doing the homework and taking action on all of these incredible tools that you're learning this week. Sanity Pack is saying, wow, just tried it. It's super cool. I'm loving that you are loving it, okay? So this is another thing that you can use to better listen into your clients and hear any negative emotions that they have, any limiting decisions that they have, any limiting beliefs that they have, right? It's really important for you to know that because again, a lot of people don't know what the issues are that they have beyond surface level, right? They might say, oh, no matter how hard I try, I can't get a raise. No matter how hard I try, I can't launch my business. But that's a very surface level issue. And once you start to talk to them and you start asking the right questions and you start looking in on their physiology and looking in on where their eye direction is going. There's um, some other things that we do in NLP too. So we look at um, essentially like the skin tone, if there's any shifts in skin tone, or if we notice like blood rushing to their face or that kind of thing, those little things tell us how the client is feeling. And at first it's a lot to think about. But as you get more comfortable working with people, this becomes more subconscious. You can sort of feel it, right? So that's what I wanna to talk to you about that. And then let's get into some modalities. Elizabeth is saying she did the homework for day one and day two. Really awesome. Hi, Annie. Hi, Yuna. Hi, Rose. Hi, Angela. Hi, Ag Agnieszka. Don't know if I said that right, sorry. Hi, Rachel. Okay, thanks so, so much, guys, for joining. Let me know that you're here. This is so cool. I love hanging out with you. All right, cool. So now let's go into some modality. So one of the main, this is one of my favorite parts about NLP, and one of the main ways that your mind um, stores information is in pictures. And based on how your mind is storing these pictures is how we are uh, relating to the world, how we feel about a certain thing, right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to close your eyes and think about ice cream, okay? Just close your eyes and think about ice cream. And the cool thing is when you close your eyes and you think about ice cream, chances are you see a picture, okay? Chances are you see a picture. 
And so if you're someone who really likes ice cream, that picture of ice cream might be really big, might be really bright, might be close to your face because you're storing information in a place where you like it. If you don't like ice cream, chances are you're storing that picture far away, kind of dim and dark, um, maybe kind of small. And the reason is because we store different things in, pi in pictures, right? If you think about the last time uh, you went to see your dentist, right? For some people, it might be, you might kind of store it in the middle and you might kind of store it like medium size because you're just like going to the dentist is one thing or the other. But for some of you, if you think about going to the dentist, you actually feel a lot of fear. It might be black and white, it might be far away. And so what I'm trying to show you is that when you close your eyes and you think about different scenarios, you're storing pictures in different places. And based on those pictures, are how you interact with that thing. So for example, if you have a client who loves a certain food and they wanna not like that same food, you get them to bring up the picture of that food, you would ask them things like, what color is that picture? What size is that picture? How far away is it from you? Is it big and bright? Is it um, moving or still, right? You get them to bring up that picture. Then you would get them to bring up a picture of something that um, they don't like as much and you would ask them the same questions. Is it near or far? Is it big or bright? Is it um, moving or still? Is it, is it color or is it black and white? And what you can do is you can help them if you're trained in NLP, take that picture of what they do like and move it to where their brain stores things that they don't like. And just like that, they can instantly not like it anymore. I actually worked with someone the other day who had a phobia. Um, she was super afraid of this one specific thing. She had been afraid her entire life. Actually, I believe um, the fear came from something that happened to her in a past life. And so the specific technique that we did, it's called time techniques. I'm actually going to talk about it a little later today, is because she had so much fear around that specific thing. What we did was um, when we brought up the picture, we had her look at the picture as if she was in a movie theater in the back in a projector looking at herself looking at the movie. And we had her run, uh, there was a certain technique, we had her run through the movie multiple times forwards and backwards in black and white until she could no longer see that picture anymore and then she no longer had the negative emotion about it anymore and so it's just it's so incredible it's so like life changing that your mind stores everything in pictures anything that you're afraid to do anything that you're excited about anything that you're confident about anything that you want to do something that you want something that you don't want there is a picture of it and based on how you see that picture you can shift it around using neuro-linguistic programming techniques to either feel how you want to feel about it or well it's essentially always feel how you want to feel about it and that's going to empower you to create the outcome that you want so just say you're really afraid of public speaking just say you're super afraid of public speaking i would get you to close your eyes think about yourself public speaking and then see yourself public speaking um, and it going really successfully. See yourself standing on stage and people clapping and getting really excited and um, just, just loving what you have to say. And then I would actually get you to take that picture and move it closer to you and make it big and bright and make it moving and make it in, in full color and get really, really excited and tie positive emotions to that picture and then lock it into place. And then what you would find is that thing that used to feel scary or that goal that used to feel far away actually seems very possible, very doable, and like you could literally stand up and do it tomorrow. And so that's essentially how um, some of the techniques of NLP work, and I'm going to show you um, more about that. So some of the things that we want to do with NLP is we want to help people change beliefs, just like what I was just talking about. So if someone's really afraid of public speaking, for example, you could help them change their belief of public speaking or change their feeling about public speaking just by shifting how that picture looks, right? Asking them questions like, is it black and white? Is it near or far? Is it bright or dim? What's the location of it? What's the size of that picture? Are you looking through your own eyes or are you looking at yourself in the picture? These are all very important things to ask ourselves so we understand that picture. And then once we understand the picture that they currently have and the picture that they want, all we need to do is make that shift. And just like that, something that's been haunting someone for life or something that someone has always wanted to do but hasn't been able to, you've now made it so crystal clear in their mind that they 
have a positive relationship with it. So hopefully this makes sense. Guys, I know that this is like really high level. Um, I've been studying this stuff for a while, so it might be really high level, it might be new to you, but I think it's really good to just know what's possible, right? Like know that there's more to coaching and there's more to um, changing people's minds and mindsets and changing people's minds than just journaling and just affirmations. You can actually, I kind of see the pictures that we create almost like a hologram, right? Because if you close your eyes and you think of that picture of, you know, you public speaking, you could probably see that picture and you can kind of move it. And so I feel almost like when you're in that movie and you're able to like move different pictures, you're doing that and you're doing that with your mind because our minds just store different things in different places and we can shift things to help us, right? I remember a couple months ago when I was launching my last program, I, for some reason, was really resistant to sending out emails. Like, just, I was procrastinating, I was dragging my feet around sending emails. And then I was like, duh, wait a second, I know NLP. I can just NLP myself. And so what I did was I figured out where that picture was of me sending emails and I just shifted it to a place where I got excited about writing emails and then I just started writing emails and had an amazing five-figure launch, right? And it can be that easy, right? You can change your mind like that. You can, instead of procrastinating or putting things off or doing things that do not serve you, you can change your mind so you start doing things that do serve you because your literally your body is a robot to whatever your mind is feeding it. So instead of being tired and procrastinating and being like, oh my God, this is really hard or blah, 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 you can literally use NLP or hypnotherapy or something that works with your subconscious mind so that you have more energy, so that you get excited about it, so you're able to stand up, so you're able to shine your light. And you know, I'm talking to you guys right now and I'm supposed to be talking to you guys about working with your client, but I think first things first, you wanna use this for yourself because you wanna be your own best client and then you can go on and use it with your, your own clients as well. Okay, um, sure, Vanessa saying, Sharice, so looking forward to meeting you. Sharice and Vanessa are coming to my NLP certification later this year. Hi, Jenny, thank you for joining. So excited to have you. Okay, cool. Abby is loving to learn how the mind interprets um, information. Okay. So here, so what I was just talking to you about, um, asking your clients, is it bright or dim? Is it near or far? Those sorts of things. Those are called submodalities. Um, and they're essentially the different like modalities within our minds, how we store different information, how we see these pictures. Okay, so what I wanna take you through is a few techniques, once you're trained in NLP, that you can use to help your clients in a deeper way. So a huge thing is construct constructive analysis, which is what I just talked about. Just looking at, at a picture of maybe one thing you like and one thing you don't like, or one thing you can do and one thing that you can't do and you wish that you could. And you can just get the submodalities of one thing. Is it bright or dim? Is it near or far? Is it color? Is it black and white of one thing? And then get the same submodalities of the other things. And then look at them side by side and say, okay, what's the difference? Okay, I'm just storing one in a place that doesn't serve me. I'm gonna shift that. Priscilla is saying, I wanna be trained. Priscilla, you can send me a message because I'm having a training coming up in November. Actually, that one is sold out, but in February, and there's gonna be online options too. So you can message me if you have any questions on that. Um, so that's just good to understand how we store different information. Next is mapping across. So mapping across, I think, is one of my favorite techniques. And so you would use this if somebody maybe really, really likes something and wants to not like it. So for me, I used to binge on, this is so embarrassing, I used to binge on sweet chili heat Doritos. And uh, what I did was when I was in my training is I, uh, the person who was training with me took that uh, sweet chili heat Doritos that I loved and just moved it to a place where I don't like it And then when I tried to eat them after I just didn't have the same it didn't have the same effect on me, right? I could just take it or leave it um, And the person that I was training for that specific thing he was obsessed with chorizo and then found out how disgusting chorizo is Because um, if you look up where the meat from chorizo comes from, it's like not cute and helped him get rid of that. So, and I've used it with my clients as well. So that's some examples of what you can do for mapping across. Um, I also used it because I was super addicted to coffee. Coffee was giving me like stomach pains. 
It was literally giving me stomach pains, but I was so addicted to it, I could not stop drinking it. And so what I did was I shifted it from the place where I store, store used to store coffee where I really loved it, shifted it to a place where uh, it was just like, could take it or leave it, and instantly was no longer addicted to coffee. And so you can use that for the exact same thing if you have an addiction, or, or you can use it opposite. Maybe you hate going to the gym, but you want to be that person who goes to the gym. You can figure out, okay, where is it that I store going to the gym and then move it up to a place that, you know, where you store things that you like to do. Swish pattern. So swish pattern is a different technique that uses your submodalities. Um, I actually did this the other day with my client who had her phobia. And so what we did was we swished her into an identity where um, she had a phobia of something and I don't want to call her out, but we're going to pretend it's turtles because it would it's like something that's pretty much as threatening as a turtle okay so essentially what we did was we swished her into the identity of somebody who thinks turtles are just cute instead of being like physically and emotionally and every every kind of afraid of them because she had a phobia we switched her into someone who's been like oh they're kind of cute right like he, neither here nor there like that's i think turtles are kind of cute like i don't want to own one but I don't run away in fear when I see one, if that makes sense, okay? So that's what you can use swish patterns for. Um, I also use sw swish patterns because um, it's kind of embarrassing and personal, but whenever I would look in the mirror, I would see like literally the ugliest person in the world. Um, like I wish I just had so much like negativity about how I looked. And when I would look in the mirror, like I would feel so negative about how I looked that it was holding me back from showing up, holding me back from wanting to do live streams or just do public speaking. And first off, like how you look is not the most important thing and how you look is not an indicator of success. And also it just was being really mean to myself for no reason. And so I used a swish pattern. Uh, one of my friends who I did a training with, um, she actually did it for me, Jasmine. Oh, thank you, Pr Priscilla, uh, Priscilla Lima. You're so sweet. Um, swished, and then I no longer felt like being mean to myself when I looked in the mirror. And I know it's such a stupid, like, shallow thing, but hey, like, we only live one life, so we might as well, like, be nice to ourselves and enjoy what we look like in the mirror and not have, like, weird body dysmorphia, right? I, and I honestly, I think it's from like all the negative programming, like growing up and people telling you that you're not skinny enough or, you know, all these magazines, like all you see is people who are size zero. And so even if you're a perfectly normal size, you can still look in the mirror and be really, really mean to yourself. So anyway, I use swish techniques for that. I use swish techniques for my clients to help them swish into the identity of being more confident and going after their dreams. So swish is a really cool technique. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different techniques that you can do as well. Um, Mademoiselle Lamaggi, I'm sorry if I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm not stupid. I work in aesthetic and the beauty industry and they tell you it's all about your look. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, it's negative programming. That's what NLP is here for my friends. All right. Okay. So there's a lot to go through and I'm going to try and get um, through as much of it as I can. Let me know guys, if you are liking this, let me know. Um, let me know if you're liking this. Let me know if this is helping you. Let me know what questions you have or if there's anything specific you would like to get out of today. So if you think about working with your clients, if you think about working on yourself, is there anything that you're wondering like, hey, is there a technique for this? Is there a way that I could fix this or or work on this or shift this? Like, let me know because I would love to try and answer that for you. Um, today, uh, Vanessa is saying, I feel you on that Reese. I went through the same thing looking in the mirror. Angela is saying I had to leave the beauty industry because of how hard emotionally it is. Okay, thanks guys. I'm not alone. It's so good. Um, Vanessa is saying she's loving it. You guys are so sweet. Megan, oh my God, yes, you should come to the workshop. Update your passport now. What are you waiting for? All right. Okay, cool. So let's move on. Um, by the way, guys, if you have not yet hit the share button, hit the share button, get this in front of more people. Hey, maybe there's more people who are feeling like me, um, who are just not loving how they felt when they looked in the mirror and maybe learning about the switch technique can help them or they can hire someone to help them, okay? Um, Priscilla Lima is saying, what are the best keywords to use with clients? So that's a good question. I would not, actually, I'm gonna talk about this because I'm gonna talk about presuppositions. Um, in NLP, which is supposing something. 
I can't quite say that there is a specific keyword, like one master key, but what you definitely want to do, and I'm going to be talking about this today, is saying things how you mean them. So the subconscious mind does not process negatives. So if I say, don't think about the red water bottle, in order for you to not think about the red water bottle, you have to think about the red water bottle, right? And when you do that, because the mind uh, processes in pictures, you're putting a picture in your mind of the red water bottle. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have this really cute floral water bottle. How cute is it? And so what you want to do when you're working with your clients is you want to make sure that you're saying things how you mean them. You're putting uh, pictures in their mind of what it is that they want to create rather than not creating. So just say you are a business coach and you're working with a client on their launch, you don't want to say things like failed launch. Like you don't want to say something like you're not going to have a failed launch because then they're going to create a picture in their mind of a failed launch, which is absolutely not what you want them to be picturing. So what you want, what you instead want to do is, is think about, okay, what is it that they want? What is it that they're trying to create? What is it that their goals are? And be focused on that. Um, it also kind of ties into manifestation because we manifest what we think about, what we create pictures of in our mind. So you wanna think about what you want. You wanna think about what the client wants and you wanna talk around that. If you guys like this or you agree, leave me some hearts. I see someone leaving hearts and I love it, thank you. Um, and also helps with the algorithm because hey, Instagram algorithm is crazy. So what you want to do then, my love, is when you're working with a client, think about what is it that they want. So again, if you're a business coach and you're helping someone work on their webinar, help them make that picture of it becoming successful because then subconsciously that's going to help them uh, do the right things to create that outcome. So maybe say things like when you have your packed webinar, when you start to make sales, when you get on a call with your dream client, when you make your first $2,000 or whatever it is, because you're not talking about you know, them staying broke. You're not talking about, you know, all the things that they don't want. You're helping them make subconscious pictures of what they do want. And it almost works almost like an affirmation. You're helping them create those pictures of what they do want. And as long as you can continue to repeat that as you're working through, they, through things with them, you're kind of presupposing that outcome. Like, of course, when you have your packed webinar, of course, when you start getting all your sales calls and you're helping them see things in a more positive way, because whatever you say is going to create a picture in their mind. All right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's a specific keyword, but um, definitely saying things how you mean them. Um, someone on Instagram is saying that it's freezing. So what I would say is head over to my Facebook page because I think it's going better on my Facebook page. And if you guys want to get updates, just head over to yessupply.co slash elevate. Um, and then you're going to get all the email updates and the homework and all that fun stuff. And I'm just going to leave that link for you guys right here. Hi, Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Um, another question we had. What about if you can't pinpoint the, pr the problem? So, you know, like what you would want to do is you just want to continue to work with the client. So what I'm sharing with you today are a lot of great tools that you can use um, as a practitioner, but you can use really good coaching questions to help them really get deep on the um, problem. You can use hypnosis to help them go back because your conscious mind doesn't remember everything, but your subconscious mind does. So you can use your subconscious mind through hypnosis to help them go back to figure out what the root of the problem is. Um, you can also pick up on their language. So what are the sorts of things that they're saying? Um, you can also use journaling. So, you know, it's not like you're going to get on the phone with the client and within five minutes, you know exactly what their main deep rooted issue is. You're going to be working with them um, deeply and you're going to be using a lot of different techniques to help them get there. And that's why it's so important that you are equipped with things like NLP when you're equipped with things like hypnosis that you know how to get deep into those problems. So one thing that I'm actually going to talk about today, time techniques, um, pretty sure it's like my favorite thing in the world. Uh, time techniques uses the power of your timeline to go back to the root cause of an issue. So for example, um, what's one that I use? Okay, so just say I was removing the feeling of sadness, okay? I might think that I picked up the feeling of sadness when I was, you know, a certain age and someone in my life died, right? But when I do time techniques, or when you do time techniques with your clients, if you learn that modality, when you get your, your client's subconscious mind to go back, 
the subconscious mind is actually going to remember something that you would probably never remember consciously. And so what I found when I went back to the root cause of a certain issue was that it didn't even happen from ages zero to seven. It actually happened before I was in the womb, right? Because I was actually pulling on or picking up that emotion from my mom, right? So through different tools, as you continue to build your practice, I'm sure you're going to want to achieve mastery in your practice, which means you're going to get the right tools to help your clients on a deeper level. And so when you have all these different tools and you get more intuitive with it and you work with people, you're going to understand what tool to use and when, especially if you get trained or certified. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. The Milk Boutique on Instagram. Cool, cool, cool. Amazing. Okay, so yes. What are we talking about now? Okay, so another thing that we can do is we can use something called a hierarchy of ideas to help kind of loosen the problems that our clients have. So sometimes when people have a problem, they're really, really stuck on that problem and they just like cannot let go of it. They're like, oh my God, like I can't grow my Instagram. Oh my God, like the world is ending, blah, 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 like freaking out. And they're so stuck on the problem, right? And they can't even see any way around that. They're like, oh my God, everyone else can grow on Instagram, but for some reason I just can't. And it's because I suck and da, da, da. They're just so stuck on it. And so what we can do is we can use language to help them loosen up the problem. And once they've loosened up the problem, then we can get into the deep change work to help them create that real change. So one tool that you can use is asking a series of questions called hi um, from hierarchy of ideas that helps you get on a different level of thinking of where the client is um, in order to help them kind of loosen up that problem. Albert Einstein said a really great quote that said, you cannot solve a problem from the same level of thinking that it was created. So we wanna get on a different level of thinking. So what we do is if a, if a client has an issue, we wanna help them think about it on a different level. So either help them get more specific, more like nitty gritty, or or really less specific and big picture. And depending on the situation, you'll know what the right thing is to do. But for example, if your client is freaking out and they're like, oh my God, I can't get any more followers. You could ask them a question like, you can write this down, but you can say like, well, what's an example of a follower? And then you're gonna get them out of the main problem and getting them to think about something else. Like, oh, well, an example of a follower is someone who like looks at my content. And it's like, okay, so you don't have anyone looking at your content? And then they would be like, oh yeah, you know what? There is someone looking at my content, right? Or you might ask them like, how specifically? And they might say, oh, well, I've been stuck at, you know, 12,000, I can't get to 13,000. And then you're gonna say, well, how, like, where are you specifically right now? And they might say, oh, I'm actually at 12,500. You're like, okay, so you are growing, you're just not growing as quickly as you like. And so that's not solving the client's problem by any means, but that's loosening up where they are because now you've gotten them out of, oh my God, I can't get followers, the world is ending, da 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 da. You've loosened it up to the point where they're like, oh yeah, like maybe I am getting, maybe I am getting, um, you know, more followers or maybe I am making progress. And you're loosening it up and then it's gonna be so much easier to do the rest of the change work. So that's a way of getting more specific with it. You can also get more higher level, right? So um, if they're saying, oh my God, and this is just kind of like a funny example of followers, like it's probably not gonna be this with your clients, but um, just say they're like, oh my God, I can't get followers. And you can say, well, okay, well, why do you even wanna get followers, right? Like for what purpose do you wanna get followers? What's your intention of getting followers? And they might say, well, if I don't have followers, um, then I can't make any money. And it's like, okay, well, for what purpose do you want to make money? It's like, oh, well, I want to grow my business. I want to help more people. And it's like, well, th then you're getting them out of getting stuck on Instagram followers to thinking about, okay, the overall purpose. They want to grow their business. They want to make more money, right? Now they're out of that problem and then you can help them look at something different. Well, is Instagram the only way to make money? Um, have you ever heard of an example of someone who has made money without Instagram? And they might say, oh yeah, my dad has a business and he doesn't even know how to use Instagram. Last time he took a picture, 
like he took it the wrong way or like you know when people take pictures and they're like parents are trying to take a picture of you and they take a picture of like this much of your head and the whole ceiling kind of like how I look on Instagram right now right so that is a great way asking your clients questions like what is this an example of for what purpose or how specifically what are some examples of this and what you're doing is you're either chunking them up that's what we call an NLP or chunking them down and the main purpose of that is to just get them out of that problem that they're really, really stuck on to realize that they have so many other options that they can move forward through. And when you get them out of there already, you're creating a miracle already. You're creating a shift in perception in their life and you're going to get them closer to getting to that outcome for themselves. So who loves that? Is that helpful for anyone? Is anyone liking that? Okay. Chani's saying Facebook is freezing. Hopefully it stops freezing. Um, Abby's saying changing the subject releases them from their negative train of thought. A hundred percent. Totally agree. Um, amazing. Cool. Agnes is saying, I didn't realize it is about images. I thought it's about words. Yeah. So if you think about it, Ag Agnes, hopefully I'm saying that right. People like, if you think about like how people have kind of evolved, where we've come from, we were using pictures and visuals for thousands and thousands and thousands more years than we were using words, right? So um, from like the way that our brains are formed, we are so much more tied into pictures and visuals than we are words. And if you think about it, when people used to read magazines, most people just looked at the pictures, they didn't actually look at the words. Or that's kind of why we scroll Instagram, we just look at the pictures, we don't really read the captions, except hopefully you guys read my captions. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? So. Um, Elizabeth saying this is helpful. Okay, amazing. Great, 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 great. So that's one way that we can help people kind of loosen up their problem. Um, and I want to show you another way that you can help people loosen up their problem. Um, and this is called, this is a little tool called Meta Model 3. All right, and so um, I actually have done this on a live stream before in a video or something before and people are like, oh my God, this is so cool. So I wanna do this for you right now and I think it's gonna help you a lot. So what I want you to do, you can do this for yourself, just for fun. What I want you to do is think about a problem, okay? So I'm just gonna go through it with you. And um, by the way, if it's freezing on Instagram, just head over to facebook.com slash justaplex. I think it's going better there. Okay, so. I'm going to ask you a question. What's wrong? And just picture this or think about this as I'm going through this. So what's wrong? What's caused this problem? How have you failed to resolve this? How can you overcome the solution to your problem? What would you like to change? When will you stop it from being a limitation? How many ways do you know you have solved this? I know you are changing and seeing things differently. Okay, so how do you guys feel? Did anyone feel like their problem turned from feeling like a problem to feeling more like an opportunity or maybe just feeling something that they can now overcome? Let me know in the comments. I know for sure someone made a shift because I felt it energetically, which I was not prepared for because usually when I work with my clients, I can feel things energetically and I literally just felt it uh, right here. So let me know if that shifted anything for any of you guys because I think that's pretty cool, okay? Uh, Prissa said, yes, it almost felt like a blessing. Amazing. Amazing. So literally just through going through the exercise, Prissa said that an issue that she had now felt like a blessing. How freaking cool is that? Just from using language and Angela's giving me heart eyes. So hopefully it worked. Um, Abby's saying, I love that the focus is that you are the solutions. That's so cool, right? Just through asking a series of questions. That's like one cool little NLP trick that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, okay, so we have a lot to go through, guys. I'm doing my best. Hi, Chemist Karma. Okay, so Chani's saying me too, Abby. Okay, so 
I also want to tell you about conversational hypnosis patterns. So like you just said, we used language to help loosen up the problem, to help shift. And I also earlier, earlier talked about saying things how you mean it because you want to help your clients um, make a picture of exactly what it is that they want. There's something called conversational hypnosis patterns. You could probably look some of them up online. And what they do is through conversation, you're actually helping people go into a state of trance, going into a state of hypnosis, and that's gonna help them create major shifts. So there's a lot of hypnotherapists in the past who they would perform hypnosis on people and they wouldn't have to like wave their little pendulum. They wouldn't have to like make them fall asleep. They would just through talking to them, get them into a state of hypnosis that would help them create a massive shift just through talking to them for just casually telling them stories, telling them metaphors. Okay. So, um, we don't have time to go in through into all of them. Another really cool thing that you might actually want to look up too is look up how president Obama actually used conversational hypnosis and NLP in his speech. Right, so he um, he was using a form of conversational hypnosis that makes things really big picture. And so when he was saying, we need change, we're gonna create change, he wasn't being specific at all. And what he was doing was he was making people create pictures in their mind of the change that they wanted. And there was people that went in and asked, hey, like what did Obama say? And one person would say, oh, Obama's gonna lower taxes for the poor. And another person would say, oh, Obama is going to make immigration easier. Or he's going to like whatever, right? He's going to change healthcare. So all these different people who were in the exact same place heard a different message because he was using these very um, like conversational hypnosis patterns that were making people see the outcome that they wanted, which helped them encourage the vote, right? And so that's something that you want to look out for um, in advertising and that kind of thing, because a lot of marketers are really well trained on this stuff and they can be using that to make you feel a certain way or think a certain way or vote for a certain person without even knowing it because it's happening on a subconscious level. So one, um, you guys are all like this, your emojis are so freaking cute. Okay, so one uh, conversational hypnosis pattern is called mind reading. So for example, you could say things like, I know that you're wondering, blah, 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 blah. And even if the person isn't wondering, they're gonna start to wonder it after because you have had sort of a presupposition that that person is wondering, right? So for example, um, maybe you're working with a client and you know that they are capable of, uh, maybe you're a business coach, right? And you know that a client is capable of creating a 5K month and you wanna kind of embed that for them. You wanna help them have that 5K month. So you might wanna say like, I know that you're wondering how quickly you're gonna have your 5K month. And what you're doing is you're using conversational hypnosis to help them visualize and see that 5K month and help it, them make it more real in their mind. Hi, Christian. You're helping them make it more real in their mind. So, you know, there's some marketers and stuff who use it for bad, but hypnotherapists and coaches like us, we're gonna use conversational hypnosis for good to help our clients be motivated and to work with them on a subconscious level and to help them um, see the outcomes that they want. Um, Annie's saying, read the tipping point. I haven't read that one, but I read a lot, so maybe I'll read it, okay? Um, another great thing, and this is also something that Obama used in his speech, is cause and effect. So we, all, like the way that we're programmed is we always believe that there's a cause and effect, right? We always believe that if something happened, it happened for a reason. So for example, if it was raining outside, people would be like, oh my God, why is it raining? And then you can just say, oh, it's raining because it was sunny yesterday. And people are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like it doesn't actually have to make logical sense, but be because we're so used to things having a cause and effect, you can use that in conversational hypnosis to imply a certain outcome, right? And so you can use that in your sessions to help people understand like, oh, well, since you are taking consistent action, you're definitely gonna have your 5K month. And you're just helping your client form that picture of them having their, their successful month. You're making it more real for them. You're increasing their belief. And of course, when you increase their belief, you're gonna help them increase taking that action because they're gonna believe in that positive outcome and they're gonna have a more positive result, okay? So 
those are three conversational hypnosis patterns. There's a ton of them, but I want to get through to all the other stuff and there's a lot to talk about. So uh, we're just going to keep moving forward. Okay. So we talked about this um, in one of my other calls, but we talked about anchoring. So anchoring is really cool. And essentially most people, like I was talking about, you don't know what you don't know. Most people don't know that they can be in control of their emotions at any time, right? Um, we, our minds work in a psycho cybernetic process. So if you're not feeling good and you want to feel better, you can literally just go like this and smile for 16 seconds. And that's going to trigger something in your face, the muscles in your face that signal to your mind, oh my gosh, she's happy. And within 16 seconds, if you hold that smile for 16 seconds, you're going to feel better. If you're not feeling confident, you can watch um, Amy Cuddy's uh, TED Talk where she stands like this. She stands in the Wonder Woman pose. And when you stand like that, what happens is you actually increase your testosterone level, which makes you feel more uh, confident and you lower your cortisol level, right? And um, we can do those sorts of anchors, those sorts of shifts with our clients for any emotion. So you might wanna actually go back to day two of the challenge. You might want to go back to day two of the challenge because I did an anchor with you guys on feeling excited. And by the way, guys, if my phone dies on Instagram, just head over to Facebook, okay? So there's other things that can anchor us as well. Have you ever smelled a certain smell like cotton candy and reminded you of when you were four years old at the fair or a certain perfume? There's a certain, uh, the Vera Wang princess perfume always reminds me of Paris because that's what I used to wear when I used to live in France when I was a nanny after I finished high school and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, right? Or maybe there's a song. I know that I, there's certain songs that when I hear them, they take me back to a certain memory. That's exactly how anchoring works. And what you can do is you can help your clients create anchors for the emotions that they want. So for example, if you're coaching someone and they want to become a more successful entrepreneur, they want to become a more confident entrepreneur, you can use anchoring to help them just go back in their mind and visualize and re-experience a time where they felt super confident. And then when they're feeling that, you can use what's called an anchor. Tony Robbins does this as well. And you can just kind of like anchor your knuckle or anchor your shoulder or your earlobe or whatever it is that you want to anchor. And then um, they'll be able to tap on that little anchor and feel better whenever they need that resource, okay? And you can use anchors for a lot of different things. Now, there's a lot of people who have negative anchors. So for example, um, I don't know if any of you guys know someone who doesn't like hugs. The reason why, and this isn't for everyone, but a reason why someone might not like hugs is because when they were a kid and they, you know, fell down and hurt themselves or they were crying, their mom would run over and hug them. And so what happens is if they're feeling a negative emotion and then someone goes like this to them, what they're doing is they're anchoring in a negative, uh, a negative tie to hugs. So even though they were feeling bad and then they got the hug, because they were holding that emotion when they got the hug, now in the future, if they get a hug, it's going to trigger them feeling bad. It, it creates a psycho-cybernetic process. So if you have kids, you might want to try to not immediately hug your kids when they're feeling bad because what could happen, I'm not going to say this is always going to happen, but what could happen is that you anger, uh, you anger, you anchor negativity for hugs, which is what you don't want. You want them to hug you when they're happy, right? Okay. Um, and what uh, you can do, and actually what happened in one of the NLP classes that I was in, was there was someone there who did not like hugs, and the trainers uh, took off that negative anchor, so then that person now liked hugs, and his partner was really happy because now his partner was going to get more hugs, all right? So um, in order to anchor what you can do, by the way, guys, if you were liking these, pl this, please hit the share button. I would so appreciate this getting in front of more people, all right? So, um, so what you can do if you want to help someone be anchored is think about that emotion. So maybe it's feeling excited and I did this yesterday. So you can go back to uh, yesterday's video for day two and rewatch it, but you would essentially just say, um, can you think of a specific time when you felt totally and completely excited? Go back to that time. Think of that specific time, flow into your body, see what you saw, hear what you hear, feel what you felt when you felt totally and completely excited. And what's going to happen because they've triggered that thought, they're going to trigger that emotion. And then you can just, you know, hold down a certain area of the body and create that anchor. Okay. So this is a great thing to use for yourself. Okay. Now, um, Man, time freaking flies. I just love talking to you about this stuff and we're almost at an hour. Um, there's a few other things that I wanna to talk to you about. So 
strategies. Um, one thing that you might not realize is that for pretty much every single decision that you make, there's a strategy that you have, right? So for you to make a purchase, I know for me to make a purchase, well, it depends. If I'm purchasing clothes or if I'm purchasing a course, it's different. But um, if I'm purchasing a course, I'll probably like watch the webinar and then get an email and then I might like message and ask a question and then I might think about it or whatever and then I'll make the purchase. Or I might think about like, well, what do I want? What are my goals? And then I'll make the purchase, right? Um, or, and so for you, if you have a client who maybe they're an impulsive buyer, like literally they see it, they buy it. I know I have someone in my life who they see something, they buy it. They have a terrible spending addiction and really bad money problems because of it. Um, and so what you want to do is if you have someone in your life who makes really impulsive decisions, maybe it's like they see food, they eat it. They don't even think about if they're hungry, they just see food and they eat it or whatever. You want to help them assess what their strategy is and what you can do is you can actually install more successful strategies. So if you have a client who has this impulsive buying habit and it's like they see it, they buy it. They don't even care how much money is in their bank account. They don't even care if they need it and they already have 45 other things that are the exact same. They just see it and, and they buy it. What you can do is you can install a strategy so it's like maybe they see it, they think about it, they ask themselves if they need it and then they buy it, right? Or if somebody just sees something and they eat it without even thinking about they're hungry, you can actually use the strategy tool in NLP to help them maybe see it and then think, hmm, am I hungry? And then decide if they want to eat it or whatever, right? So um, strategies are really cool. So you can use strategies if you need help to get motivated. Or maybe if you're procrastinating, right? You could ask yourself the question like, hmm, like when do I know it's time to procrastinate? And you realize that you procrastinate every single time it's time to work on your business. Every time it's time to work on your business, you go and watch Netflix instead. You can actually go and you can shift that strategy. So instead, when you know it's time to go work on your business, you go and you work on your business and then after you go work, uh, go watch Netflix as a reward or whatever, right? Um, and so that's a really, really cool tool. Um, you guys are talking about anchors for smells. You guys are so funny. I love you so much. Okay. So now what I want to talk to you about is, um, parts and I'll just give you a quick overview of what parts are. So has anyone, let me know in the comments if you've ever felt this way, has anyone ever said to themselves, part of me wants to do this, but part of me wants to do that. Part of me wants to be a public speaker, but part of me is really freaking scared. Part of me wants to purchase this course, but part of me is, you know, scared of purchasing a course, right? Has anyone ever felt like they have two different parts? Part of me wants to spend less time on Instagram, but part of me keeps scrolling all day, right? What's happening is that if we go through something in our life, maybe a traumatic event, something happened, our minds, our neurology will actually create kind of like a mini identity within our neurology that is created to protect ourselves. So for example, maybe as a kid, you did a pub, you did a speech in front of your like grade five class and you got embarrassed, somebody laughed at you. What might happen from that traumatic effect if formed a gestalt, um, which is like a, a significant emotional event. And because of that, you might actually form, Instagram's gone. Um, you might actually form a separate part. I'm actually gonna just bring it back up. And so those two parts are actually gonna be working against each other, right? So you might have a part of you that wants to do something, it wants to go after your dream, that wants to make more money. This is a big one, actually. You might have a part of you that wants to make more money but then you might also have a part of you that thinks that rich people are bad, right? And so you have those two parts that are completely butting heads and that's gonna actually stop you from achieving your goal. So what you can do as a coach, if you're trained in NLP, is you can combine those two parts and help them work together in tandem so you don't have two parts that are, you know, um, pushing against each other or stopping you from doing the thing that you're meant to do, right? So if you find yourself saying, part of me wants to do this, but part of me is scared. Part of me wants to get rich, but part of me thinks that rich people are bad. You have two separate parts. There's a part of your neurology that was formed to keep you safe, to keep you, um, 
away from harm. It was just, it was really just formed to protect you. But now if you have a big goal, something that you want to accomplish, it's actually getting in the way of you achieving your dreams. There's something called a parts integration where you can bring those parts together. So those two separate identities that you have, you're bringing them together, you're allowing them to work in peace, and then you can achieve your goal without feeling like there's an internal conflict. The majority of the time, if you're not achieving your goals, it's because you have some kind of internal conflict. You want to show up and shine your light, but something is telling you that it's not safe to do that. And so parts integration is going to help you as a coach, and it's also going to help your clients as well. Okay, so the last technique that I want to talk to you about is time techniques. Um, and this is one of my favorite techniques. I just used it the other day to help someone with a phobia. And I find that for me, it's kind of like my go-to technique. I use it the most on my clients and I find that I actually use it the most on myself. By the way, guys, if you are loving this, let me know, leave me some hearts. Let me know if I'm on the right track. If you feel like this is helping you as a coach, a healer, a practitioner. Um, and also just a reminder, whoever shows up the most, leaves the most comments on Facebook, participates in the homework and um, just you know shows up for themselves, shows up for their business. At the end of the week, you're gonna win a little prize from me, which includes a mug, a crystal, and a book, okay? So let's talk about time techniques. And I also really appreciate if you would share this too. So let's talk about time techniques. So essentially, consciously, you're not going to remember, uh, consciously, you're not going to remember every single thing that happened. But subconsciously, um, Erica is, is signing up for NLP. Yeah, time is really cool. I'm so excited for you to meet, uh, to learn it. Okay, so consciously, you're not gonna remember every single thing that's happened to you. But on a subconscious level, your subconscious mind remembers everything. Guys, if you went out for dinner and you were talking to your friend, but there was people behind you having a conversation, even though consciously you weren't paying attention to it, subconsciously your mind has picked that up. And this goes back to what I talked about yesterday, how at every given moment there's 2 million bits of information, but we would get overwhelmed if we took in all the, those 2 million bits of information so we can only really pick up on about 126 bits, okay? So... What we want to do with time techniques is if there's something that's holding you or your client back, if you have a limiting belief, you feel like you're not good enough, or you have a fear of rejection, if you have a limiting decision like, oh my God, I could never speak on stage, or I could never make X amount of dollars, or whatever, or um, you have a negative emotion, you're always feeling maybe angry, or you're always feeling sad, time techniques can help you figure out what is the reason why you're feeling this way. Because you might feel like you're sad because you know your boss is mean to you, but chances are that's not the reason, that's not the root, that's just something that's happening now that's bringing that emotion up to the surface because your subconscious mind is like, hey, can we please work on this? Like, I'm sick of feeling this way, can we please work on this? And the real root cause of it, it has either happened to you, be, uh, happened to you from ages zero to seven. So maybe a conversation that your parents had or a conversation that your teacher had or a show that you watched. And for a lot of people, it actually has come up from before. So from a past life or it's generational because we, we pass through emotions through um, our parents and, and through generations. So what Time Techniques does is you would close your eyes. If you're in my collective, I actually have a few meditations that help work with Time Techniques. If you would close your eyes and you would get in touch with your timeline. And what happens is if you close your eyes and you think about your past, and you, and you just ask yourself, like, where is my past? You're gonna point in a certain direction. And if you ask yourself, where is my future? You're gonna point in another direction. And you're gonna see that those, those two points are a line. And using that line, you can float above it to find out what is the root cause of you feeling angry? What is the root cause of you feeling sad? What's the root cause of you not feeling good enough or, or not being able to make decisions or having fear of rejection or whatever that is? And we can work with our clients to help them go back to whatever the root cause is remove those negative emotions, remove those limiting beliefs, remove those negative decisions, and then remove them from that point all the way up to now so that now they can, they can actually move through the world and overcome their goals and achieve the things that they want to achieve without the negative emotions or negative feelings tied to them. Okay. It allows you to think clearly. Actually, pretty much every client that I work with after I do it, they're like, Oh my God, I feel so clear now. I feel so light now. I know for me, one of the main things that we do is we remove the top five emotions. So anger, fear, um, sadness, guilt, and hurt. Did I say that right? Anger, sadness, fear, guilt, and hurt. Yes. Okay. So we remove those top five emotions. And the first time that I did it, 
I realized that my whole life I had been walking around feeling like I had ankle weights on. And after I did that, I felt so much li- like I felt light, like I felt clear, like I felt like I was actually seeing the world clearly without this filter of, you know, all these limiting beliefs and negative decisions. So it's a really magical technique. And so with time techniques, it helps you go back to the root cause and figure out what that is. So the other day I used it for someone to help them remove a phobia. Um, in the past, I, I, I've had clients with a whole bunch of different things, but people feeling like they're not good enough. It could happen because you know, a teacher said something to them in grade one or their dad paid more attention to their sister than them and they didn't even realize that it bothered them until right now. Or, um, you know, your mom always said that she had to lose that last 10 pounds and that's why you're struggling with your weight. Like, it's so insane because when we're ages zero to seven, we don't have a conscious mind to figure out what is logically correct and what isn't. I love Kale is loving this. Hello, thanks for joining us. We don't have the conscious mind to help us filter out what is actually correct and what isn't. So sometimes we form weird connections that don't actually make sense. Like for me, I can share with you, when I was doing a lot of work on my money story, when I went back and I thought about like, what is my first memory of money? My first memory of money, guys, is my mom arguing with my dad because my dad hadn't paid like his child support or whatever because I grew up in a single parent household. And so do you know what idea that gave me? That through my whole life until I figured it out and started to work on my money mindset, that gave me the idea that if I talk about money, people will hate me right? Which makes no sense at all. And money like is a huge part of every single person's life because we all have to pay bills. We all have to make money. We all have to, you know, buy clothes and food and that kind of thing. And I thought that if I talked about money, people would hate me because of, you know, having that situation, being in that situation as a kid and not having a conscious mind to decipher what makes real sense and what doesn't. Okay. So time techniques helps us go back to the root cause and, and figure out and like allow our subconscious mind to process it and say, Oh, as an adult now, I realize that that doesn't make sense. And I had a client once that felt like, because she was, she wasn't even overweight, but first off, she thought she was overweight. And she's like, because she was overweight, she couldn't be successful. Which first off, there's lots of people who weigh more who are very, very successful. Those two things have absolutely nothing to do with each other, right? And so when we went back to the root cause, it was because um, her mom, when she was a kid, couldn't accomplish something that she wanted. And also kept saying, I need to lose my last 10 pounds. And so we just make these weird crazy connections as kids because we don't have the conscious mind to say this makes sense and this doesn't so that's why time techniques is so amazing um what we can also so we can use it for phobias we can use it to get rid of limiting beliefs negative decisions internal conflicts um those sorts of things what we can also do is we can help people put a goal in their future timeline so for example you might be saying oh i want to become a i want to quit my job by november right? You might be saying, I want to quit my job and become a coach by November. But when you actually were to look at your timeline, when you actually look at your timeline, if you don't do the work on your timeline, when you look at your timeline, you might actually see yourself in your future on a subconscious level, still working at your job. And remember your subconscious mind is 99.996% of your decisions, of your actions, of your routines, of your rituals. Okay. And your conscious mind is only 0.004%. So even if consciously you're saying, yep, I'm going to quit my job by November, but subconsciously you don't see that for yourself. You don't have that picture inserted in your timeline in November, then you don't have your subconscious mind helping you, right? You don't have your subconscious mind showing you the things that you need to see to create those opportunities, showing you the people or the ways to make money or the ways to quit your job or the ways to get your website going, or you don't have the motivation from the inside to do the work that you need to do. And that's why we want to have our goals in alignment with our subconscious mind, because like I said before, our subconscious mind is the domain of our energy. It's our domain of our motivation. It's our domain of how we get things done. It's our domain of like going back to day one, we look out into the world, the opportunities that we see. Right, So you can use timeline therapy to create that picture of you quitting your job, making X amount of dollars in November, and then you can put it into your future timeline so you see that for yourself on a subconscious level. And then you are able to accomplish your goals so much more easily and effortlessly because 
You're not trying to force and push consciously with that only 0.004%. Now you have your subconscious mind helping you and making it easier for you to get there. So uh, time techniques is really freaking cool. Um, and saying subconscious mind is more than 99%. Yeah, like that's a lot, guys. Like that's a lot. All right. So we talked about parts. We talked about time techniques. So let's get into the homework. So first off, I'm really excited. Hi, hi, Ashley. I'm really excited to see who has done their homework from yesterday. I got a few messages from people who put themselves out there to do their homework. And I want to say I am so proud of you. Like, it's so scary the first time you do it. And then once you do it, once you overcome that threshold, you're like, oh my God, I can totally do this. And I'm a huge believer that habit is a key to success. So just keep putting yourself out there, keep pushing forward and you will achieve the outcomes that you want. Keep just going after it and focusing on what you do want, not on what you don't want, right? So let me know if you did your homework from yesterday. Angela is saying her mind is exploding. Guys, I told you the very beginning I said, do you want to know what you don't know or do you want to stay ignorant? And you chose to say. So I know this is a lot. You might have to come back and watch it again. That's totally okay. Um, but you know, this is the information that I wish that I knew years ago. Like I wish that I knew that I could be in control of my emotions. I wish that I knew how to use my subconscious mind to my advantage. I wish that I knew that I could literally, if there was something that I was procrastinating on or holding back from, I could just take that picture and move it and like just change my life like that. So it, I feel like it's like my duty to share this with you because I'm really passionate about mindset. I'm really passionate about energy and um, I just want to see all you guys kill it. So, um, Chani saying, I'm so needless as I prepare to quit the nine to five. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so guys, so here's your homework. By the way, if you have not yet hit share, please hit share. You never know who is wanting to learn more tools about their mindset. Maybe they want to learn NLP. They want to learn how to use the power of their subconscious. Maybe there's someone out there who is getting in their own way and they want to learn how to overcome it. And so just from you hitting the share button, literally just pressing that little button, right? That little S-H-A-R-E button. You're putting good karma out into the world. You're helping more people get in front of the information that that might help them really, really change and up level their life. Okay. So Angela's doing last night's homework. That's awesome. Okay, great. So today, uh, your homework is practice feeling energetically connected with someone in a rapport. So we talked about this yesterday more about how to structure your sessions and how to get in rapport with someone. So practice that. And what I would also say is practice the eye patterns that I talked about today. So you know I talked about uh, when people look in different ways, they're recalling different kinds of information from different um, areas of their mind. Practice that. So when you go out for coffee with a friend, you know, see where they're telling you their story from, right? Or if you ask the barista for a coffee, see if like if he remembers how to make your coffee or if he's just making it up, right? Okay, so that's part one of the homework. Um, so practice listening to not just what people are saying, but also the underlying notes of what they're saying, so how they're saying it. Um, and then also think about how can you say things like you need it. So remember how today I said, um, the subconscious mind does not pro process negative. So if I say, don't think of the red water bottle, all you're thinking about is the red water bottle. So what I want you to do is get really comfortable with practicing not saying things that you don't want and instead saying things that you do want. So if you don't like your boss, don't say, oh, I hate my boss. Just say, I like more freedom, right? Okay, so I want you to practice doing that in your everyday for yourself and I want you to practice that if you have clients already, doing that with your clients because that's gonna make a huge shift. And also, Reflect on the techniques that you learned about today. So we talked about a lot of different techniques. We talked about parts integrations. If you have two different parts that are kind of wrestling against each other, we talked about strategies. So some people are very, um, like if they want to buy something, they're just impulsive and they just buy it. Or some people think it through and have different strategies towards things. Think about your strategies that you do that are helpful for you or that might not be helpful for you. Think about if you have clients, any of those as well. Think about any anchors that you have. Just go over some of the techniques that we talked about today, like anchors. Is there a certain scent that reminds you of something? Is there a certain feeling that reminds you of something? Do you want to create your own anchors to feel a certain way to help you with more confidence or help you feel excited? Think about that. 
um, go over some of the conversational language patterns that we talked about today. And then also think about the submodalities that we talked about. So the submodalities was the different pictures that we form in our mind. So if you think about the last time you went to the gym, if you close your eyes and think about where you, the last time you went to the gym, where are you storing that picture? And is it in a place, like if you think about the last time that you went to the gym, and then think about something that you love to do. Maybe you love to watch Riverdale on Netflix. So if you think about the last time you watched Riverdale on Netflix, for me, it's really big and bright here because I love that show so much. And now that I'm actually thinking about it, the gym is a little bit further away. So maybe what I'll do after today's call is I'm going to move that up closer so that I'm more motivated and excited about going to the gym, right? So think about where you're storing different pictures in your mind and are they benefiting you? And how can you change them so that they do benefit you, right? So... Think about that, think about what you learned about today, reflect on it, look over your notes if you left notes in your journal, and um, also think about which ones might be your favorites to start working with your clients as an NLP practitioner, as a coach, as a hypnotherapist, um, as an EFT practitioner, okay? So think about what that is for you. Um, if you guys have any comments, today I was actually able to see the comments in Facebook. Sometimes Facebook doesn't want me to see the comments, but today I can, so I'm gonna go through them and answer a few questions if there was and just read out the comments and give shout outs to people who shared because I love you so much and I appreciate the support. And a reminder, whoever shows up the most this week, you do your homework, you leave comments, you engage, you're gonna get access, uh, you might be chosen to win a mug just like this, a Yes Supply mug. This one says you can, but I have lots of different mugs. Uh, and also included in that prize is a crystal, which this isn't the crystal. I need to really grab it. You're going to win a selenite crystal that is about this size. So selenite is really great for cleansing your energy, especially if you're an empath like me. Very important. There was actually an exercise that we did today that I felt your guys' energy shift when we did the meta model um, process. And you're also going to get a book recommendation from me. So when you win, I'm going to reach out to you and I'm going to be like, hey, what are you working on? You're going to tell me. And then I'm going to recommend a goal, uh, book for you based on your goal. Because I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of um, e-books and, and that kind of thing. And so I'm going to give you my best recos. All right. So I'm going to go through questions. Um, as Lam Brong is saying, can you tell me how to work in under pressure and control on mine? So... Um, a big thing that we talked about today was anchoring. So if you're feeling, well, what I would say too is you don't wanna kinda of suppress any negative emotions, so you might wanna journal them out. You might wanna hire a coach to help you if you're really feeling under pressure and negative and you need to kinda of talk through it. Um, and then also we talked today about anchoring. So thinking about, instead of thinking about the emotion that you don't want, think about the emotion that you do want and how can you get into that state and how will being in that state help you have a clear head um, in order to tackle whatever it is that you're working on. Also, if I'm ever feeling like kind of like nervous or anxious or under pressure, um, I love using EFT, emotional freedom techniques, and I'm gonna be talking about that on day five. So definitely tune in for day five. If you have not signed up yet, head to yessupply.co slash elevate. I'll leave the link for you right here. At yessupply.co slash elevate, you're gonna get um, updates when I go live for this challenge. And you'll also get the homework so you can participate in the homework. And I'm really excited to see you guys. Like I can see um, how excited you are. You're learning a lot already. Um, and this is kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Like there's so much more to learn in NLP, but this stuff alone is just really gonna help you. So I'm gonna pin that comment there. So Angela's saying journal out. Yeah, Abby's saying such a great live. Thank you, Reese. Thank you for showing up every day this week, Abby. I totally notice uh, someone says thank you ma'am really funny abby saying that's so good chenny uh okay chenny saying i set a date a few years out but i want to make sure i'm actively working towards it fully so chenny i'm not actually talking about ooh, like my hair i'm not talking about manifestation today but um oh my bra was showing that's great i'm um, not i'm not talking about manifestation today but you want to make, like, if you're manifesting something and you're setting a date, make sure you're not setting a date too far out because you might be manifesting something a few years out that you could actually manifest in a few months, right? There's nothing that says that you have to wait a few years to quit your job um, unless you want to wait that long, but you could actually create that outcome a lot faster. And 
you're in my group and you already have a potential client. You already said you have someone who is ready to work with you. So like, hello, and you've just started. So you're well on your way, my love. Okay. Um, Ignatius is saying, I did day one homework, changed my beliefs and repeated them whilst tapping, slept for three hours after. That's so awesome. Also, if you're tapping, drink lots of water. Just let the energy flow through. Um, Annie, okay, we already read that one. Abby is nerding out. Hi, Ashley. Do we become conscious after seven or is it more maturity in the brain? Would love to know. I'm totally nerding out right now. So yeah, that's when we start to build our conscious. So there's diff there's actually different um, levels. So zero to seven is the imprint phase. So zero to seven is when we're literally being imprinted from everything that's happening around us, from TV, from our teachers, from our friends, from our parents, from travel, from, you know, what street we live on. Like we're just being imprinted and that's when we're creating our model of the world. So that time is really, really important. Um, after that is our socialization periods. So that's when we really like, of course, we're being social our whole life, but that's when we really understand how to socialize with different with different people. And then um, that's for the next seven years. And then there's another phase after that. So you're right at zero to seven is when we pretty much have like no conscious mind at all. And then we're starting to build on it. But we don't get really mature until we're in our adult years. Um, Agnes is saying, so you would never feel those emotions again. I, you're probably talking about time techniques. And for some, you might not, um, unless it's going to help you. So for example, like fear, you can remove the feeling of fear using timeline therapy. But the way that we do it is we remove it until you need it to protect you. So if you are in a situation where you should be feeling fear, you're, you will have that response that you need in order to, to cope with that, to deal with that. But you just won't have irrational fear anymore. Like how I had some a client who had an irrational fear of, I'm gonna say turtles. It wasn't turtles, but it was something kind of similar to it. Okay, so uh, where in the collective can I find this time technique? Meditation. So Angela, I'd have to look for you, but because you're in the collective, you get my daily morning emails. So I've created a few in some of the morning emails, but I don't remember which one it was. But if you go into the collective, if you go into the area where I have some of the past morning um, rituals, so I have like 21 days to owning your inner power, 21 days to uh, your rebirth, 21 days to um, self-love, like I have all the different topics that I've, that I've uh, created for you. Um, if you go through and you scroll through and like listen to the meditations, you'll find the right one. Okay. Mm. Agnes is saying this is crazy. Yeah, that's how I felt when I did it. And I literally went to this class because I was like, I just want to help my clients with it. And then when I learned it, I was like, holy crap, everyone in the world needs to know this. Like, why do we not learn this in grade two? Like, this is very important stuff. Okay. So <laughs> I was saying part has part so elizabeth you might want to hire someone who knows nlp to help you with a parts integration megan is a gemini agnes is indecisive you might want to hire someone who knows nlp to help you with the parts integration if that's holding you back from what it is that you want to create okay guys that's all the comments i can see 164 comments that's a lot thank you guys so much for joining i love you so much work on your homework um leave any questions that you want afterwards i would super appreciate if you would share and check your email um so that you get notified when i'm going live tomorrow and actually if, if you um yeah just check your email you'll find out when i'm going to go live and you can click to find to get a notification when I'm going to go live. So I love you so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for your amazing questions. I'm excited for you to do the homework and learn more about yourself and learn more about your mindset. And I would super appreciate you sharing with me what you learned today, what you loved it. And if you have any questions for tomorrow, definitely leave them and I will try to answer them. So guys, have an amazing night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.